Hey guys, how you doing? It's Walter here and just wanted to give you a quick introduction. James Wyatt, who is our uh, interview this week, is actually our first repeat guest. Uh, he shares with us what's going on with his business. He's a He has a karate studio here in Cambridge and he's going to share about what's been going on throughout uh, 2020, dealing with the pandemic and how he's dealing with the current lockdown now. Anyway, we jumped right into conversation, so I thought it'd be a good idea to give you a bit of an intro of what's happening and I hope you enjoy the show. Hi, my name is Walter Montero. I'm a real estate and mortgage agent here in Cambridge, Ontario, and I've had the privilege of serving our community since 1987. Over the years, I've met some great people here in our community in many different businesses and walks of life. Some, of course, are well known and others are some of the best kept secrets in town. So the purpose of this podcast is to share and introduce them to you. Welcome to the I Love Cambridge podcast. The last time we talked, I was still in the middle of construction, I believe. So, yeah, I think yeah, I, I I think you were just sitting at home, I believe. Yeah, I was sitting in my uh, office. Yeah, yeah. So yes, sorry. yes, I remember. Go, go, go. My dogs are here. Well, too. you look very official. Oh, you got <laughs> yeah, <they're... laughs> you got somebody looking to crash the party. A little bit, no, and they're gonna cover me in dog fur. Go away. All right. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, good. Actually, I was actually just filming some stuff because, as you know, we're in lockdown again. So we're um, we're teaching online on Zoom again. Yep. Um, yep. And then uh, what I've done is I've started creating student portals on a system that we're using. So I film myself yep. doing stuff, and then the kids can access it and just sort of practice at home. Which is great. So, uh, so with the student portals, tell me a little bit about that. So, what, do you upload a recording or something, and then they can go in whenever they have an opportunity? Is that how it works, or? Yeah, because, um, <laughs> sorry, my dog again. That's okay. <laughs> Love my dog. Um, yeah, so what makes doing karate online very tricky is the fact that, like, I could upload it to YouTube, but the problem with YouTube is then it's public domain, right? And sure. what I would need to then do is send all the unlisted links to all my students and keep updating links, which would make it very difficult. So yep. with uh, the system that we use, we use Marshallytics. Um, the second that the, the COVID had shut everything down, they opened up uh, a student portal. They rushed to finish it. So what it does is anyone who's on our system, I send them an invite and they get a little login. So when they log in, according to their belt level, they get access to certain, certain videos that I post. So oh, if, you're, if you're a yellow belt, you can't see beyond yellow belt until you grade for your orange belt, which is pretty cool. So I've just been like constantly updating that just to give them something to do, to do at home. And if they have questions and they can access that or email me or whatever. So, yeah. Very good. So now, have you got uh, students that are just online students? I mean, obviously now everybody is, but do you have people even when before the lockdown that were just online and not coming into the dojo? Yeah, when we we were allowed to open, I'm just trying to remember when we last talked, because I don't think we were open yet either. Um, when we were given permission to start running classes again, pretty much everybody started embracing coming in. And we had a few people who were hesitant and wanted to do online. But to split my attention was really difficult in class. And yep. I was pretty much packed. Like I've been doing 40 hour weeks ever since June, um, just day in, day out, because I was trying to squeeze as many classes in as I could um, and keeping everyone safe. Because we were only allowed to have about 10 students a class. And, yep. uh, you know, with a space this big, I'm like, all right, let's just get them in. Um, sure. So for a while, I stopped doing Zoom um, or doing online training. And then, I had a couple of students actually from out of town. So we have a student who's from Guelph who their dojo decided not to do any online training. And uh, they found us and started training with us. And that's when I started utilizing it again. And yep. with Christmas and the worry people had about um, social gatherings or maybe just you know, trying to be safe themselves, I started yep. using Zoom again. So some people embraced it, but mostly everybody wanted to be in the dojo um, sure. because it was something to do and it was something that they knew was safe because of all the precautions we've been taking this entire time. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, uh, let me ask you with, with regards to your students, are they still mostly younger folks or do you have adult classes as well? Um, actually it was kind of interesting. We, so we still have kids. Um, my biggest oh. group pre COVID was four to six year olds. Um, and then the biggest group that started to appear were actually between the ages of nine and 13. Okay. And I've been getting a number of the dads. The dads oh, are yeah. like, you know what? I think I want to sign up. So yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I had already set all my classes. So I had like one spot that I'm like, all right, dads, come on out. 
And some of these guys had already had previous experience and yep. I squeezed them in once a week. And of course, you know, now we're in lockdown, but um, I'm going to kind of review our schedule and hopefully give them more. But yeah, we're getting a lot of the dads now, which is awesome. Yeah, very good. I yeah. figured that, I, I figured that would just be a natural progression that that would, that would occur. Yeah. And I, I think too, it's, it's, they see, they see what their kids are doing and sure. a lot of them it's nostalgia because you're like, yep. yeah, I remember doing that and then they, you know, they hem and haw and then they're finally like, all right, let's do it. And they email me and yeah, it's pretty cool. Yep. Very good. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, your momentum while you were open, mm -hmm. um, where, where are you located again? So we're located in the new Long and McQuaid Plaza on Beverly Street. Yes, okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm currently working on getting my sign officially put up. Um, okay. Without it for a while. So eventually you'll see across the thing, you'll see us. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, very good. And what's new at the dojo besides the online stuff? Do you have anything else going on? Any other programs that you've got? sort of up your sleeve for the new year? Yeah, so we actually started a box fit class. We realized that's not something oh. that's really advertised in town here. Um, okay. And a lot of the parents were asking, you know, could we, could we do some sort of box fit class? And we started a trial program that went up until Christmas, and then I was going to reevaluate it for the new year. And okay. we've got a good group of parents now. They're like, we want to do more. Um, so that's our newest thing that we're doing. Um, the other thing that I'm wanting to bring back um, is our competitive team because obviously competitions aren't happening. So yeah. it's all online. And again, some of the kids are a bit hesitant on wanting to do online competitions, but what I'm noticing is like all our competitive dojos that we go up against every year, I've noticed some of their students are still training. So yeah. my guys, I'm like, come on guys, we got to get going on this. And so that's what I was working on today is I'm trying to film all the cuts that they need to know and uh, their homeworks to have at least three memorized by the end of the month. Um, oh, good. So we'll see how they do because got to get back on it. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about this box fit. How how often are you good? Are those going to occur? And and um, you know what are the times of the classes? Yeah. So right now we were running them at eight a.m. on Saturday mornings. Um, I'm hoping okay. to get maybe twice, two times a week. Uh, so I'm going to change okay. one of my fitness classes to accommodate that, and that'll be in the evening, obviously. Um, the only thing is, is it's limited on how many people, cause it's how many bags we have. So like one of these here, we've got about eight. Yep. Um, so we can have that many people in on a class. Um, I see time, time wise, I'm hoping to have two to three classes a week. We'll see what the year brings, but with us being in lockdown again, I'm still continuing it. So people who have a heavy bag at home can, can definitely use that. But then I'm also yep. trying to make it more like a shadow boxing class. Um, I'm going to be emailing yep. out that information out at the end of the week yeah very good and uh, in terms of uh, the cost for that is that by way of a membership or is it per class yeah so i usually just do a monthly membership um i'm gonna run it kind of the same way i do with kids with karate so uh it'll be 120 dollars, and that's uh with tax as well but what it will include is it'll be classes twice a week for six weeks plus you'll get a set of um boxing gloves that are yours to keep it's similar what we do with the kids with their karate uniforms in six weeks of classes. Um, after that, it switches to a monthly membership. And when things settle down and we can have more people in class, then you'll not only get to do box fit, but I'll let you hop in the other classes too. So you'll get, you know, three or four workouts a week. Good. Very good. Excellent. All right. Well, it certainly sounds like you've adjusted to the, uh, to the crazy times. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually grew. Like we, we made up the, the students that, we had had pre-COVID um, yeah. and then we just continued to build up from there, which is, you know, I can't really complain about the growth that we've had. It's been, it's been tremendous. And, and the support too, like, I got to say, like all the families have been so flexible with everything that I've needed to do. And I appreciate that they recognize the hard work I'm putting in. Um, and I mean, not only myself, but all the other businesses out there, I see it. And um, I'm glad it's being recognized because it's, it's not easy. <laughs> it really I isn't bet. easy. I bet. Yeah, I, I, I sympathize with these uh, with these businesses such as yours and, and yeah. the restaurants and the small mom and pop shops. I mean, they're that's a tough grind. That's for sure. Definitely is. Yeah, for sure. All right. Was well, there anything else that you want our audience to know? Um, you know what? Well, just as we were just saying, like continue to support local, support your local dance studios, your local restaurants, your local dojos. 
um, and, you know, try to be as, as flexible as you can and we'll do the same. I mean, our, our goal is to, you know, keep our business afloat, but at the same time is to make sure everybody's safe. Um, we follow the protocols to a T um, and that's, that's what I want people to be aware of, you know, once lockdown's okay. done. Again. Perfect. Yeah. And where can people find you again? How uh, online and, uh, and of course, offline. Yeah. So on Facebook and Instagram, it's at KMA Center. That's C-E-N-T-R-E. Um, and then they can obviously find us at KazokuMartialArtsCenter.com. Um, and then they can even, you know, knock on the door and stop by and say hello. Awesome. That's great. All right, James. Well, that's awesome. You're our first repeat guest. You're Yay. actually our <laughs> you're actually our second repeat guest, but it was actually a, it was a recording error, so we had to do a show okay. twice. <laughs> the unofficial first person. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the official second guest or second time okay. around. <laughs> well, I'm honored. Awesome. Thanks very much for being a part of the show and uh, all the no best and happy new year. Yeah, happy new year and definitely keep in touch. I look forward to doing okay, this. You bet. Awesome. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Bye.